Okay, this video is on uh, the flame sensing rod. Now I've just fired this furnace up. The hot surface igniter is right here. That's the glow stick. These are the burners. There's three of them. Right here is the flame sense rod. Now the flame sense rod is nothing but a piece of stainless steel. There's nothing special about it. It uh, doesn't uh, perform any function rather than conduct electricity. We get you a little closer here. And we'll get some light back off. Okay, now the burners are operating and I'm going to induce a failure. I'm going to remove the wire from the flame rod. Now the burners have shut off. The hot surface igniter is coming on again. It's acting as though it did not sense flame. Now it's going to try three times and then it's going to shut down. As soon as this thing shuts down we'll pull that flame rod out of there and we'll take a look at it and see what it is. Okay, hot surface igniter's back on. Burners have lit, that means the gas valve is open. We're not going to sense flames, so it's going to shut down. Okay, now this is a flame rod. It's not going to want to look at this thing very bad. But it's just a piece of stainless steel. It's nothing special. Uh, it does get deposits on it. Now this one's been in this furnace for 12 years. And I've never cleaned it. Uh, and it hasn't failed. Furnace is trying one more time. It's not going to start because the uh, flame rod's not in there. This can be cleaned with steel wool, sandpaper, whatever you want to use. I would not be too aggressive on this thing because the stainless steel does actually have a kind of a chrome coating on it. Uh, and don't be too aggressive but don't be too afraid of it. The thing is uh, very simple and there's a lot of uh, talk about how they should be cleaned with this or cleaned with that and I'll tell you I have been a uh, heating and air conditioning instructor for a number of years and when I sabotage furnaces I do everything I can to get that flame rod not to work. I can't get them to not work. Uh, I put duct tape on them, soak them in chlorine, and so on. And I can't get them to fail. So I don't think a little bit of sandpaper residue is going to make much difference. Uh, they uh, do eventually get deposits on them. It probably does for, come from chlorine and phosphorus for the most part because most of these appliances that have this problem are 80% furnaces. Usually their burners are down here. Uh, and they take inside air for combustion. This one here takes outside air because of this cover here. This cover usually is mounted here and pulls outside air in through this pipe up here. So uh, it has very little problem with anything getting on there. Just go ahead, clean it up, put it back in. Uh, it'll probably be fine. Here. Right about in that area, usually, not always. Now, the machine is running normally. Kick the lights off a bit so you can see it. I'm going to induce a failure here. If I pull this wire off the flame rod, then 
the furnace shuts down on safety, turns off the gas valve here. You can't hardly see that, but it's down there. The hot service igniter has come back on. It will uh, make another attempt to light. There it goes. It has not sensed flame, so the gas valve is shut off and it'll try again. Now what's happening with these things is that little flame rod is sticking in the flame. It is sensing an electrical circuit in the flame. It's called flame rectification. You don't really have to know about it. There are testing tools to uh, check it out, but you don't have to really know. All you need to do is pull that flame rod out of there and clean it up. The flame rod is nothing but a piece of stainless steel shaft that stays inside the flame. This wire here goes to it for, to conduct the signal back to the board down below. And if it doesn't sense the proper signal, then it's going to go ahead and shut it off. If you can clean it pretty much however you want to, there's a lot of misinformation out there on cleaning these flame rods. Uh, some pay, say don't use sandpaper, don't use steel wool, so on. The only reason I might not use steel wool is I might get a piece of it stuck on there and that might short it out the ground. That's about it. Uh, these things, uh, I have never had a problem with them cleaning them with sandpaper. You can clean them with a file. I've even scratched them with a screwdriver uh, to get them to sense flame. And that usually works. They get deposits on them. Uh, this type of furnace, not so much because the uh, this is a 90 percenter and this cover is usually put right over here and it takes outside air for combustion. Outside air is a lot cleaner than inside air. Uh, if it's an 80 percent furnace, we'll move this down a little bit. You can see down here where the that's the inducer, the black thing on the right. The burners usually are down here at the bottom. Uh, not always, but usually. So if you have the uh, symptoms that you get a glow on one side of the furnace, the burners light, and then they shut off, and it does that several times, uh, pull out the flame rod, clean it up, put it back in. Uh, common symptoms for this were people would wake up in the morning, the furnace isn't working, they turn the power on and then back off again, or off and then back on again, and it would start up. And they'd come home from work and it's not working. And they do that again, and usually it gets worse and worse. Very simply, that flame rod is not sensing flame, it does not get the microamps it needs, so it shuts it off. I've seen a lot of them vary between 0.2 and 0.6 microamps, that's the number they read, and sometimes they'll fail, sometimes they won't. Most of these things should prove it a half a microamp. Well, just clean it up, put it back in, that may solve your problem. Very commonly, especially with an 80% furnace, that will solve the problem.